A very wonderful morning to my esteemed listener. I am Yemi Graceman Aduloju, lead pastor, Lighthouse International Christian Center, Salmon that you are road, Ibadan, Nigeria, welcoming you to today's edition of our program, Daily Impact. For our meditation today, I'd like us to consider the book of Hebrews, chapter number 3 and verse number 8. And also verse number 12, the word of God says, Do not harden your heart as in the rebellion, in the day of trial, in the wilderness. Verse 12 says, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. It is important for us to know how to comport ourselves as we await the performance and the fulfillment of the promises of God for our lives. There are certain things we need to deal with in our lives and in our destinies. Number one thing you need to deal with in awaiting the blessings and the promises of God, in awaiting the fulfillment of prophecies and promises concerning you, is to deal with every evil or hard heart. That scripture says, do not harden your heart. There are very many people whose heart has become hardened and therefore they cannot receive the promises of God. Some have evil heart and because their heart is evil, they cannot receive the fulfillment of the promises of God for their lives. I encourage you, dear listener, to deal with every form of evil heart or hard-heartedness. The hardness of heart does not make a man believe. Hard heart does not allow the word of God to find entrance into the heart. And it is the entrance of this word that brings light and understanding. But hard heart is not receptive to the word of God. It is not receptive to the promises of God. It has doubt on the promises of God. It thinks evil of the promises of God. As a matter of fact, it thinks evil about people who are sharing testimonies of the fulfillment of the word, the promise, and the counsel of God for their lives. So in waiting and receiving the promises of God, you must deal with evil art or with hard art. Don't allow hardness of art. Our fathers allowed hardness of art in the wilderness and they incurred the wrath of the Almighty God. They wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, a journey that should have taken them 40 days, eventually took them 40 years, And many of them died in the wilderness without seeing the fulfillment of the promise of God for Israel as a nation. Don't allow hardness of heart. God wants to make good his promises concerning you. You may not look like it. It may look very, very remote. And you may begin to wonder, can this thing be? Don't forget Zechariah. He went dumb. He became mute because he cast doubt on the word of God which must be fulfilled in its own time. Don't cast doubt. Don't allow your heart to be ardent. Touching the word of God, touching the promises of God that must be fulfilled in your life at the appropriate time. What again must you deal with uh, to receive the blessings and the promises of God? You must deal with unbelief. In that same Hebrews chapter 3, in verse number 19, the word of God tells us that so, we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. The children of Israel could not enter into the promise of God for their lives because of unbelief. Dear listener, I encourage you to dear God and believe Him. Believe totally. Believe completely. Believe all utterly. Let your heart be engaged in your believing. Trust God for the performance and the fulfillment of His words. Unbelief makes a man cast doubt on the word of God. Unbelief makes a man look for alternative. Very many people are looking for alternative to God. There can be no alternative to God. So stop looking here and there. Fix your gaze upon the Lord. In the book of Isaiah chapter 50, verse number 7, the word of God says, For the Lord God will help me. Take that, dear listener. The Lord God will help you. He said, Therefore, I will not be disgraced. You will not be disgraced. He said, therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. There is the need for you also to set your gaze, 
to set your face like a flint unto the Lord. There is the need for you to lift up your eyes unto the hills from whence cometh your help. Don't allow unbelief. Dare to believe. Let your gaze and your focus be on God. Don't forget the attributes of God. He is a covenant keeper. He is a promise keeper. And so never allow unbelief in your heart. Don't entertain unbelief at all. Don't entertain doubt. Never doubt the possibilities that God's word has promised you. Never doubt the fulfillment of the prophecies concerning you. Be strong in your faith. Behave like Abraham. Abraham did not stagger the promise of God through unbelief. The Bible says, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Although the circumstances of Abraham didn't look like anybody who could receive the promise of childbirth. Ditto for the physiology of Sarai, who was already 90 years old. But the Bible says Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God due to unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving the glory to God. And therefore it was counted unto him for righteousness. And the word came to pass because he dared to believe. Disallow unbelief in your life. Eject it completely. Number three, disobedience. To receive the fulfillment of the promises of God and performance of prophecies, you must deal with every form of disobedience in your life. God is a covenant-keeping God, but God's covenant will be kept with those who obey. Trust God and obey Him. Don't be disobedient. Obey every injunction and every instruction of God. This will expose you to the blessings and the miracles of God and the performance of the promises and the prophecies concerning you. I believe Abraham was so close to God and he got all that he got from God because of his obedience. In Genesis chapter 12, beginning from verse 1 to 5, God came to Abraham in awe of the child is where he was. And God said, get out of your father's house, leave your kindred and go to a land that I will show you. God did not show him the land in advance. God wanted him to step out by faith and then he will later show him the land. Abraham obeyed. In Genesis chapter 22, God came to Abraham again to test him. God made the demand for Isaac, his only son. And Abraham promptly obeyed. And because of his obedience, God began to enter into a covenant. God said, by myself, I will bless you in blessings. I will multiply your seed as the stars of the sky, as the sand of the seashore. Obedience connected Abraham to the fulfillment of the promises of God for his life. Your obedience also will connect you to your promises. It will connect you to your prophecies. Learn to obey God and you will experience the fulfillment of promises and prophecies in your life in the name of Jesus. Number four. You must deal with discouragement. Never allow anything or anyone to discourage you. It is important. In Numbers chapter 32 verse number 9, the word of God says, For when they went up to the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel, so that they did not go into the land which the Lord had given them. Do you know? It was just the report of 10 people that cost about 3 million people their lives in the wilderness. 10 people discouraged millions of people. And these millions of people were wasted in the wilderness because 10 people discouraged them. Never allow anyone or anything to discourage you. Sometimes, the closest people to you may be the one, the instrument of discouragement, but never allow anything or anyone to discourage you. Never allow someone who stepped on your toes to affect you and then discourage you from receiving your promises. Again, I tell you, never follow the multitude to do wrong. Never be discouraged with the discouragement of others. Never allow anyone, never allow anything to discourage you. Your promise is about coming to pass. Never allow discouragement. In the house of God, you will see many things. You will see many people that may want to discourage you. Just know, anytime you are close to your promised land, discouragers 
will come around you. They may tell you tales that will weaken your hand and affect your heart negatively. You are close to your promise. God has said, I will hasten my word to perform it. So don't give room for discouragement. Don't give room for discouragers. Never allow them near your life, near your destiny. And it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray. Father, make my heart simple and receptive. In the name of Jesus, I refuse an evil heart. I refuse hardness of heart. Let my heart be simple and be receptive to your promises in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I'd like you to begin to express your faith in God. Lord, I believe, I believe there shall be a performance of your promises and your prophecies concerning me. I believe in the performance of my word. I believe, oh God, I believe, I have faith, I have confidence in you, in Jesus' precious name. Receive the grace to walk in obedience. Obedience is a choice. Pray, Father, I choose to walk in obedience today. I will obey you to the letter. I will obey your words. I will obey your instructions in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Come against every form of discouragement. Cast out every discourager from your life and from your destiny. Lord, I overcome every form of discouragement. I refuse to be discouraged by anything or by anyone. I have set my face as a flint on you, the living God. I will not be ashamed in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. I pray that the Lord God of heaven will strengthen you. He will give you a new, a clean heart, heart that is receptive to his word and his promises. I pray, casting out every form of unbelief and doubt in your life. I pray that your faith in God and in his word and promises will be strong and that by faith you will obtain his promises for your life. I pray that discouragers will not find a road into your life, that you will not entertain discouragers or discouragement. I pray the promises of God will locate you and the name of the Lord in your life will be glorified. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Be a supporter and partner of daily impact with grace man. How do I support or how do I become a partner? By praying for this program and praying for me. Also by sharing this message and forwarding the link to your contacts. You can also support and partner financially. Your financial donations can be sent to the Senate Bank account number 12161004566. The account name is Daily Impact with Grace Man. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on other social media platforms. My handle is at Yemi Grace Man. Until I come your way again tomorrow for another exciting edition of our program, I am Yemi Grace Man at Duloju, wishing you a very glorious day and the Lord bless you.